What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for May 8th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Well, gritty, hard fought win 116 115 in overtime for the Sixers. I, I will say it was a much better played game. And like I said, I think I would call that gritty because of the way everything went down. It's not good that they blew the 16 point lead. However, the Celtics, won are a good team. To the NBA, everybody makes the run. And that's kind of been the, the Sixers' MO a lot this year. Anyway, I'm more impressed with the fact that the way the Celtics have had their number and have played against them a lot uh, this season, the fact that it would have been very easy because we see, we saw it happen in the one regular season game where the Celtics came back and the, the Sixers just crumbled. So the fact that they were able to keep it together and ultimately win this game – that's a good sign. Uh, so they're 2-2 heading back up to Boston tomorrow night. Uh, Joe had 34-13. Uh, James Harden had 42. One thing that, two, like like I said, the two things that stuck out to me, one was just the, the fact that they stayed with it. They were gritty and didn't allow the, the pressure of the, the Celtics and the ghost of Celtics past, I guess you could say, get into their heads. The other is is the referee, and it's interesting. Somehow there was a few Boston fans' uh, Twitter feeds that or Twitter lines that got onto my feed, and I mean, obviously Sixers fans. There was a couple missed calls that could have gone the other way uh, when Tatum pushed off of Maxi, basically pushed it, like forearmed him out of the way, uh, like old school Reggie White style. But then the Celtics were up. The Celtics fans were upset. So I don't know if it's just because I like somehow the Boston feed is getting onto my Twitter, and I'm noticing, or whether there, there is something. So it's something we're going to keep an eye on uh, moving forward in the series with the referee. But two two. Heading back to Boston, and I, I, like I said, I like the way that they showed up and, and did not fall when they very easily could have, especially with their, their recent history against the Celtics. Our Sixers plus two and a half game bet will cash and as soon as the series is over. So nice little added bonus for us there. Kept it rolling. The Phillies actually got back on the winning track yesterday as well. Six to one over the Red Sox. Tawan Walker actually looked very good. Six uh, innings, one earned run, six Ks. Schwarber, since being moved down in the lineup, went two for three with a homer and three RBI. I really do like him hitting down and start uh, hitting uh, hitting leadoff. And hopefully he's going to keep it that way now that Bryce is back to, to get some of that consistency and allow – Allow the guys to kind of do what they got to do and, and just get comfortable. As Charlie Manuel used to always say, it's hitting season. So we, we need to, to start hitting. And what better way to do that than to be just consistent. All right, NFL draft – or NFL. NHL draft lottery is tonight. And the Flyers do have a shot to – move up and get the first or the second pick that currently set uh, seventh. So likely that's where they're going to go. They could move down as low as nine. I guess theoretically they could get eight as well um, or move up to one to two. So tune into that and we'll, we'll have an update on that tomorrow. But there is, I forget the site. I think it's NHL draft simulator or, or something where you can actually just play around and, and just do, mock lotteries to see um if you have five minutes to kill it's kind of a fun thing to do i've done two the first one the flyers got the first pick the first time i did it the next one it took me probably 16 17 times before they got it again so it's not impossible it's just probably not very likely but we're going to stick with our flyers theme today we're going to go back to 1980 and on may 8th 1980 the Flyers beat the Minnesota North Stars 7-3 to win the Campbell Conference. Bill Barber had two goals to tie <coughs> excuse me, Reggie Leach, who we talked about the other day, team record for goals in a playoff series. He added a, a shorthanded goal later on and would have set the, he set the record team record for 
most points in a playoff series with 12, which ultimately was broken in 2011 by Claude Giroux. He also became the only player in NHL history to score three shorthanded goals in a series. Um, but like I said, this win sent the Flyers to the Stanley Cup for, I believe it was the fourth time in six years at that point. Uh, so definitely a little dynasty going on. But they ran into a buzzsaw with the New York Islanders, who the Islanders teams in the, the late 70s, early 80s were just very, very good. Uh, so they ended up losing the Stanley Cup Final 4-2. to two. But on this day, they beat the North Stars 7-3 to three to get to the Stanley Cup Final once again. We're going to stay now for our Sixers playoff spotlight with the 1979-80 season. Sixers were second in their division, third in the conference with a 59-63 and record. Their head coach was Hall of Famer Billy Cunningham. Dr. J was All-NBA first team as well as an All-Star. He led the way with 26.9 points a game. Bobby Jones was All-NBA first team on defense. <clears throat> Excuse me, Caldwell Jones uh, averaged 11.9 rebounds per game. Mo Cheek, seven assists. Some of the other notable names on that team, Henry Bibby, uh, Chocolate Thunder, Daryl Dawkins, Doug Collins, Caldwell Jones, Steve Mix, and an interesting one who you might not know, uh, Jim Spinarkle, who is the one of the play-by-play -play guys for CBS College Basketball, was actually on this Sixers team as well. They rolled through the Eastern Conference playoffs. They beat the Bullets 2-0 in the first round, Hawks 4-1 in the second round, and then the Celtics 4-1 in the Eastern Conference final. To go to the NBA Finals, they played the Lakers. They lost four games to two. This was Magic Johnson's rookie year. This was the game that, due to Kareem's injury, I forget which game number it was, but Magic played center and had like the greatest game of his life. Um, to ultimately beat the Sixers. And this sort of started that they were, this is their second finals in three years now. So they were always there and just could never get over the hump. Uh, but we do know that eventually, once um, <clears throat> Moses Malone came in, he kind of got them over the hump and did it. But the 1979 1980s Sixers went to the NBA finals, lost four games to two to the Lakers after. Rolling through the Eastern Conference playoffs. Um, Flyers on this date back in 1980 beat the Minnesota North Stars to go to the Stanley Cup Final. This was the, the, the year that all four of the Philadelphia, Philadelphia teams were in the finals of their... Like, they started the season in 1980. So the Eagles, 1980 season, they went to the Super Bowl. Phillies won the World Series. Sixers were in the NBA Finals. Flyers were in the Stanley Cup. So... Only one championship to show for it. Great win by the Sixers. I hope the Phils keep it up. We're be, we'll be back in Boston for the Sixers, though, tomorrow. Need them to come out and play and not get blown out. It's very, very pivotal to win game five. It's going to be a tough environment. But they've proved that, proven that they can do it. So let's, let's keep it rolling. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Monday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.